Hello ladies and gentlemen, it's Mike here at Game From Scratch, and today we're going to be looking at a game engine that was recently introduced to me on the Game From Scratch Discord. Do check out the Game From Scratch Discord, it is a great place for all things game development related, including some ideas for videos. So uh, the link for the Discord is down below. But what we're talking about today is Snacks, S-N-A-X, and this one is a bit of an oxymoron. It is a low-level, visual-only game engine. So you can actually have really low-level access to your hardware. It's very minimalistic. Behind the scenes, everything is C++ driven. But you use a high level visual flow graph kind of approach to actually making your game logic work. And what you see in front of you is the Snacks IDE. Now it could definitely use a layer of prettiness, especially around the way that nodes are actually displayed. Uh, but you can see here a simple Snacks program. And what this is basically is a skinned imported mesh that was brought in from Mixamo and you can control multiple different animation states with it. So I'll actually just go ahead and show you. So you can run over here, you've got project view available there. Uh, so right here, you can see project view, or you can go here and see project view. Now I'm gonna go back and show you on this one, and you're gonna notice while it's running, we have this kind of a flow chart of what's going on. So you're seeing uh, these guys are feeding information up here to the camera. So this is controlling if I move the mouse around and orbit the mouse. That is what this logic is handling, as well as zooming in, zooming out. So you see those are feeding into the set camera matrices, but this is called after the program starts. And you see here, we've got things, pretty low level graphic stuff here. So we're setting render target views um, to the depth buffer and the back buffer. Clearing rendering, uh, this is the clear, the depth stencil buffer. This is setting the viewport. This is setting the camera matrices, again, being fed in by those values, which are controlled by your mouse. The rendering of your stuff right there and the drawing of debug geometry. Now you may be looking at this logic and going, okay, wait a minute, where am I getting it? So if I press P, I punch. If I press K, I kick. Now, what is actually controlling that logic? Well, you'll notice this guy down here. This is the rendering, and it's rendering this imported fighter model from Mixamo. We're going to open that guy up, and here is the import node and every frame. So once again, while it's running, it's going ahead and it's calling uh, the animation on it. Now, the ones that are key to, and we've got a skeletal controller, and then we've got this entire node hierarchy, which comes from the Mixable mesh. You've got things like your light, the material on this character, uh, all those various different things, the transformations, handling it, all of that stuff is coming here. And that's coming from the imported Mixable model that we see in action over here. So the P and the K handling things, well, that's from this trigger and this trigger. So you can double click a node, and you can get some uh, properties on it if they make sense. So you see, uh, trigger at value on increase is firing out and you can set various different properties of it. So what we got here is trigger zero, this is the P key, and then trigger zero here, this is the K key. Now, of course, again, I do stress there could do a layer of making these nodes look nicer so that the text fit, so that they were laid out a bit nicer, and it would go a long way towards this game engine. Being, like, it doesn't really change the functionality, but it would certainly change the, the visual appeal of this guy. Now, the cool thing here is you can actually set breakpoints at any point in this, and you have a call stack, so you can see like what the most recent calls are. So you've got debugging abilities built in here, and this is basically the logic that's handling, so those are the two triggers. So watch when I go over here, and I'm gonna press, uh, this is the P key. So watch the P key and then watch this tree as I press it. So there you can see it fires an event up, adds the animation in, and that add animation uh, call is right there. Uh, now you'll notice we've got a variety of these things called chips. Now a chip is basically a building block of snacks and you can see a thread or a common thread here, potato chips, it's a snack. I think that's where the whole naming convention came from by the way. Uh, but snack, um, chips are basically, you think of like chips in a microcomputer. You've got a number of chips that work together to accomplish something. So you might have a graphics chip, a uh, timer chip and so on and so forth. Well, the building blocks of a game using snacks are chips as well. So you see here, we got a number of them. So again, so if you're working with physics, we've got some for actors, we've got um, proxy chips, matrix manipulation, text displaying triggers like we saw in action right here. Uh, there's a number of different chips. These are basically where your game logic comes from. On that topic, you've even got chips for things like obviously if and else, and then of course you've got your uh, loops in here as well. So that is uh, the basics of it. Now these chips themselves can actually be written using the C++ language. We're gonna get to that in just a second. Um, another thing you've got going on here is you've got templates, so predefined things. So for example, if you need to create a fixed camera, it brings in the node. So it's a predefined set of chips for you for creating a camera. So if you wanted to create a camera obviously in your game, 
Uh, you do from you know, from the start, you would wire it in here to set this up and you are good to go. Now you're gonna notice, uh, by the way, I can also delete, it will get rid of the whole tree for us. So we got uh, templates here for things like the cameras, handling a textured material, creating a primitive, uh, setting up back buffer, an empty project. So if you just basically wanna start somewhere, you can basically just create uh, an empty project and then you could go ahead, okay, all right, now I need to create a camera in my empty project, and you can just pull that pin out, drop it in there, you've created your camera, as an example. Let me just get rid of, I don't know if that's gonna get rid of the whole hierarchy, no, it doesn't, all right. Uh, I may have made this hard on myself. Okay, let's get rid of those, yes, and you, gone. All right, so you see here, you've got a number of different templates to get you up and running quickly and easily. Uh, then on top of that, we've also got libraries for a variety of different things here. So, for example, PBR materials, uh, render context handling. We've got some uh, GUI stuff here. We've got widgets that you can draw on screen and so on. And essentially, that's Snacks. It's lightweight, uh, very low level. So you're, you're definitely working closer to the graphics hardware, for example. You're setting up things like render context, etc. But you're working with this high-level node structure. Again, I would like to see the nodes... Well, frankly, just look a bit better and just kind of restructure them, make them look a little bit more like, I don't know, say blueprint nodes look like. I'll give you the ability to expand and collapse them down, set some of the properties directly in the node instead of having to drill down into them. Uh, but other than that, it's a very neat setup and it's got a lot of functionality already. So that is a quick hands-on with Snacks, a little bit of the details of Snacks. We're going to head on over to their website. Uh, it's available at snacksgameengine.com. Uh, it is free. Uh, it is for Windows only. Sorry, I guess I should have mentioned that up front. Uh, so Linux and Mac people, bye bye uh, No idea actually if this will work in um, Wine or something to that effect. Uh, but if you want to go ahead and download it, it is for Windows 10. Download link is right there. Uh, in terms of what Snacks is all about, well, we kind of covered over it. Uh, it's a development tool for real-time 3D graphics applications like game simulations, visualization solutions, high-performance real-time 3D graphics. Uh, based on a powerful real-time visual programming concept, your project keeps running as you develop it visually without scripting a single line of code. Why would you use it? It's fast, it's free, it's simple, and it's versatile. Um, Got a little bit more detail here. You've got the chips. This is your visual programming language here. Uh, we kind of covered all of that stuff at the front end. Uh, there's a chip for everything. And then where there isn't a chip, there is an SDK. So some of the key features are visual programming. It's got real-time development. So your, your game is basically constantly running, constantly updating. So basically just start adding new chips or new stacks, in, new, new chips into your stacks, and it will just update on the fly. So it's a kind of a neat interactive programming experience you're working with. Uh, built on the concepts of object-oriented programming, got easily debugging. Um, so you've got breakpoints built in and so on, stack trace, edit and continue, monitoring values and so on. Uh, Built-in performance profiling and it is module by design. Uh, so that is Snacks. Now it's built on DirectX, which is probably why it's Windows 10 only. Uh, it also uses the PhysX, uh, physics libraries from NVIDIA. Uh, you can head on over here. The, uh, the project itself is not open source. It's free, but it is not open source, but the SDK for it is. So if you want to go about making your own chips, you can do so using C++. Uh, they are released under the BSD3 open source license. And here is an example uh, from the same repository. So you can see here, creating a uh, value operator right here. You're handling a series of callbacks in C++. A copy, load, save, and execute. And then here we got this get value. And then here is your, your logic behind this chip. And then finally, for setting the value. So that is what it would take to create your own chip. So if you want to extend the language, uh, you have the, the underlying uh, functionality is exposed. Uh, I don't know what the documentation is like. So we've got examples, but I don't know how well documented it actually is. So you might be exploring around a little bit to actually figure out the SDK itself. But there is an SDK out there. So if you want to create your own chips to extend things, uh, you can drop down into the C++ language to extend it to add new, well, I was going to say modules, but chips uh, to the underlying system. And you can uh, expand things that way. So here again, this is Snacks. Now the cool thing here is if you want to come in and get, uh, get it started with it, you're going to notice here we've got a number of different projects available here. 
This, for example, is uh, the PBR rendering function. You can see here the PBR rendering in action and the end results. You can definitely get some nice results out of the renderer behind this. The performance does seem to be quite solid, although I haven't really pushed it that hard. But really, if you want to start off with Snacks, what you're really going to want to do is just, once again, come back here, create a new project, and start out with some of these guys here. You've even got some uh, UI functionality here. It's very simple for the most part, but you can create... Uh, simple GUIs and these projects will show you how to go ahead and create those. Snacks is kind of an interesting point. It's at the level of being um, high level functionality for low level programming, I guess is the best way I would put it. So if you wanted to get a little bit closer to the hardware, but you don't necessarily want to write code, or if when you do write code, it would literally just be for extending, Snacks could be an interesting thing to check out. Now, of course, there are some definite limitations here. It is not fully open source, just the SDK is. It is Windows only, which of course is going to be a deal breaker. And I could definitely, they could use a layer of polish to make this just look a little bit better. But otherwise, there is a ton of functionality in here. And if you head on over to their website, now, interestingly enough, they don't have a ton of, uh, well, they don't really have any socials. There's no Discord here. Um, if you want to reach out to them, you can email them here. They're available on Twitter, but they should really launch a Discord server, I would suggest, at this point in time. But if you do want to learn more about Snacks, it is once again available at snacksgameengine.com. Uh, the SDK is up on GitHub. I will link that down below as well. Uh, Lightweight 3D game engines with a high level visual programming, but for a low level access. That's a very unique niche. A uh, cool thing here is they are pretty active in updating. So for example, Snacks uh, version 1.5 uh, was, uh, actually, no, that's not it. 1.6, uh, the most recent version here, uh, it was just released on April the 5th, 2020. So definitely there have been updates here. Uh, so you can see details of what was actually added in that version. Uh, so it is an engine under active development, which is of course important because it is not open source. But again, it is modular and extensible. Uh, so it'd be interesting to see if it is a tight enough framework for you to be able to extend it with the SDK uh, far enough to make the kind of game that you would want. But it's an interesting project. Again, I would definitely recommend a layer of polish on the prettiness. Uh, also, I maybe wouldn't use a lime green background. Um, but other than that, it's, uh, it's interesting. It's definitely a unique game engine. I don't know if it's right for most people, but it's definitely one worth checking out. So that is the Snacks engine. What do you think? Let me know, comments down below, and I will talk to you all later. Goodbye.